Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hi, and welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. In this episode, I'm happy to bring back Donna Kelly. And tell me again what your your um, your title is. Oh, well. Is it nutritional coach? I am a pharmacist. Yes. An integrative nutrition health coach. That's, yes, integrative nutrition health, health coach. coach. Which means a holistic approach to health care. Absolutely. And you're moving into a new role, which yes. we'll talk about okay. in just a minute. But today we are talking about understanding aging and longevity, which is so funny. Uh, not too long ago, we're, we're actually recording this in early December. Not too long ago, I saw on social media that Donna was going to be presenting this topic. And I immediately got on email and started talking. Typing in a message to Donna. Donna can talk to me about this because we want to talk about aging longevity. Because I think this is a topic that is uh, crucial and essential to every one of us because we're all going to experience that, right? We're all we are all getting older from conception. Right. From the moment we're born, yeah, from conception, absolutely. So yes. <clears throat> so this is a topic that we all need to know about and. Um, you know, we we all want to live not only long lives, but we want to live healthy lives. Yes, you know? it's, it's the lifespan. We want our health span to equal the health the lifespan as closely as we can, and so that's what we're going to talk about. Yes, and for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I have to apologize. I did not even bring my camera today. It's been kind of a hectic, crazy day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's just kind of how it goes. So, But we uh, are here, and we're ready to rock we and share ready. information. Absolutely. So, Donna, um, what made you even want to start to look at studying this before you started talking about it? Well, I, I'm getting older. Um, we are all getting older. And um, after my experience with healing my leg pain of 55 years and one month through nutrition. Absolutely. I, and please, if uh, for our <laughs> listeners, go back to Donna's uh, previous podcast episode where she talks about how she did heal herself of leg pain in right. pretty short order. Right. Uh, as you say, I'm a reformed pharmacist. I yes. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, um, I have dispensed... Uh, prescriptions and uh, told people about over-the-counter medications but you know when it's time for me to come up to bat I flinched and said I don't think so Mm -hmm. that's really I I'm just this last couple weeks thinking wow that was kind of an interesting thing but you know if you're not willing to change your life and your nutrition then Maybe that's your only approach is medication. Right. But that will never get at the root cause. Yeah. So um, my whole focus now is how to help people increase health. Because ev- if every cell is healthy, yeah, every tissue will be healthy, every organ will be healthy, you will be healthy. You can't have disease or symptoms if your body is healthy. Mm-hmm. And we talk about how to support your cells, your body, to give you health and energy. Those two things. Right. Because that, that way you can enjoy life. Yeah, that's quality of life right, right. there. Right. You know, my grandmother lingered in a nursing home for seven years oh. and did not have a quality of life. And it was really hard for her and hard for us to watch. I'm sure she didn't cognitively want to be in that situation. No. So I don't want to be in that situation. None of us do. None of us do. My right. mom died with uh, with a memory impairment, and, uh, you know, that was 25 years ago. And, you know, my whole life has been, you know, seeing my grandmother. Um, she was blind from diabetes. Mm. I mean, so, you know, that is a huge, huge 
problem with our population diabetes. So when I was doing my my studies, all I had to do is look back on, on grandma. I, I knew the answers to that. Oh God, so right. I knew, do not mm-hmm. smoke for my grandpa, do not have diabetes for my grandma. Of course, at when she was suffering that from that disease, you mm-hmm. know, insulin was just first starting to come on. Yeah. The testing wasn't there. The knowledge wasn't there. Knowledge gives you power. Mm-hmm. And because of the internet, you know, this information is much more accept- accessible to the common Joe. Sure. Before sure. you were dependent on finding a doctor and hopefully he would know the information who could help you with it. Yeah, and usually he, of course. That's now. true. <laughs> and that is pretty much falling away, and I hope it falls away further and further because it needs to be a democracy with medicine. It does. We need to be proactive and be an active partner in our health. That's a good point. We have to step up to the plate and care about our health. Mm-hmm. We cannot be taken care of right. by somebody else. Right, and place our health in someone else's hands. Right. Or, if you want to look at it from mm-hmm. another perspective, sell our health right. to pharma and um, the Insurance the companies. Insurance companies and the uh, food industry. Absolutely. Right. Because you are selling your health yeah. to buy their inferior products mm-hmm. that takes your health further down. Wow. I yeah. mean, I mean, it really is a true statement. That is I mean, it could be tobacco. It could be alcohol. It could be the vape, vape cigarettes. Right. I mean, there's so many things that impact us negatively, and we j- we need to know that information so that we can protect ourselves. Right. Keep your money and increase your health. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta-da! That was easy. That was easy. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> I'm sure there must be more to it. There than is that. a little more to that to it than that, and this is really a fun topic because when you look at aging, it is actually an intersection. Of biology, mm-hmm. sociology, yes. mm-hmm. and psychology. Okay. Okay. Now I get the biology and psychology. Where does sociology come in? Oh, oh. we are meant to be Social. connected. Mm-hmm. We, um, when we're born, we are helpless and mm-hmm. unless uh, somebody takes care of us. And for many, many years, we're not going to thrive and we're sure not going to get to adulthood. And so, yeah, and I'm going to give you more on that. Oh, please, 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 yes. So we're going to start off, if you don't mind, with just a couple of um, definitions so that we can all get on the same page. Sure. So aging is really um, senescence. And in senescence, the cell is accumulating harmful effects. It becomes more fragile. It's more vulnerable to disease, and it gradually loses its ability to uh, divide, grow, and repair. When you have that happening in multiple cells over time, then that leads to death. Okay. Okay. Right. And we are all going to die. Right. But we want to keep that process to a minimum. And there is actually a group that is studying how to engineer negligible senescence interesting s e n s <laughs> yes Sen- and it stands for strategies for engineered negligible senescence and wow. i will just tell you what <laughs> their site says it says that if their ability to understand the processes continues and they're able to Uh, transfer it to humans that they believe that the people who will live to a thousand and i'm just telling you what their website says is currently alive wow however there's a lot of people that think that currently Mm -hmm. the lifespan of a human should be about 140 so you can see how we are beliefs right we'll discuss that a little further and how our lifestyle Really, we're not anywhere near that, or the majority of us are not. Right, the majority are not. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, we've talked about the negligible uh, senescence. So Mm -hmm. that is basically to decrease aging and the and and the decline of function Mm -hmm. to decrease that. So you want to keep your functions of your cells right up. Right. So um, 
it's not just a discipline that is maybe interesting for some people. It actually is going to impact societies because as societies get older and age, then that, by definition, means that you have fewer young people. Right. So one of the examples that I found in this seminar was Japan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Japan has a um, low immigration rate. They don't allow many immigrants into their country. Mm -hmm. um, they have smaller families, mm -hmm. so their population is aging. They have fewer young people. Right. So d this not only means that they have fewer young people being able to work to support their entire population, but the higher percentage of the elderly, they don't have young people to take care of them and because there's fewer children right they are having to live in nursing facilities mm -hmm. and that is a whole shift from their cultural way of doing things right so they are actually currently using robots to help take care of people on some some repetitive type of sure because they don't have people to take care of them and that is oh. current right 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 so i mean this impacts a lot of very developed countries right and it's kind of like dominoes you know aging population fewer young people i mean it's just you see the exponentially the problem becoming bigger right so you know it if, if you care about you know your young ones and you would like to not only take care of yourself, but not be a burden on society. Yeah. You, it kind of behooves you to try and take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we're doing. So uh, lifespan is able to be calculated from mm -hmm. records, birth records and death records. And we've talked about the health span. Mm -hmm. It's the number of years of life that is lived without significant disabilities. Yeah. And we want those two to be as close uh, to each other as we can because we don't want to be yeah. laying in bed or in a nursing home for the years. The lifespan and the health span, we want those to be right. more equal. Yeah, right. So let's talk just briefly about what we die from. Right. Okay. okay. So number one, uh, this was in 2016. Uh, heart disease is number one. Cancer is number two. Mm -hmm. uh, accidents. Yeah. Chronic lower respiratory disease. Mm -hmm. Strokes. Alzheimer's. Diabetes. Influenza mm. and pneumonia, mm. kidney disease, and intentional self-harm suicide. Oh, wow. So is that ranked? Ranked okay. from top to the bottom. Uh -huh. Wow. Now, when you look at that, actually, this does not, this was from the CDC, and they actually don't put in there the leading, the third leading cause of death, mm -hmm. was, which is atrogenic uh, death, which is Death due to medical errors. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. That Third is, leading cause of death. Right. So this is this is a major problem. Um, yeah. It isn't studied a lot because it's hard for uh, to get good statistics because a lot of hospitals they don't, don't the right statistics. They do, and instead of looking at this from a we need to learn what happened to prevent this from happening again. It's hush-hush. Right. So that's a big thing. But if you look at this list, right. lifestyle and diet will address all of that. Lifestyle and diet address heart disease, addresses, well, it, healing it will, from cancer. That's right. right. Uh, accidents goes down if you, you've slept well. Right. Because your re reaction time is up. Right. You're not drowsy. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, not drinking and right. you know not smoking, dropping right. a hot cigarette on your lap. Absolutely. Right. So the, right. all of these mm -hmm. can be addressed by lifestyle and diet. Right. The leading cause of dying is not because of aging. Right. So um, the longest lived human currently, and I think she only died like. Maybe five years ago. I, I don't have that exact information. She was a French lady. She lived yeah. to be 122 years old and 164 days. Oh, my god! So that's a little over um, another half year. Right. Uh, she took up fencing when she was 85. Wow. She rode her bike daily. She rode one on her 100th birthday. 
She quit smoking at 110 because she could not see well enough to light the cigarettes anymore. Oh. And she needed to move into a nursing home at that time because she was cooking at home and taking care of herself. She lived alone, and she did have a small fire because okay. of cooking. Right. So right. at 110, she moved into a um, care facility. Mm -hmm. At 114, she broke a femur. Oh, my. Okay. But still lived many more years. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in the care facility, her routine was she was up at 645. Mm -hmm. She prayed. Very yes. important. Mm -hmm. Gave thanks and Absolutely. gratitude. She then exercised in her chair because wow. at that point she wasn't able to, to get around very well. Right. She bathed without assistance. Mm -hmm. She washed her own dishes. Mm -hmm. She ate lunch, had one cigarette, and three ounces of chocolate. <laughs> then she took a two-hour nap. Wow. After that, she would visit the other care facility residents, sharing news and, and um, you know, of the day and of the different fr friends. Mm -hmm. She would have dinner. She made her own fruit salad, which was bananas and squeezed orange juice. Wow. She would listen to music, have her second cigarette of the day, and then go to bed at 10 o'clock. And she kept that up until 122. And a half. And a half, yes. <laughs> and the oldest uh, male to date is 116. Uh-huh. So um, our lifespan uh, pretty much revolves around um, human fertility. It spikes early and then tapers sure. off. right, right. And then mortality starts to rise as we age. So, uh, But there's plenty of organisms that cause that follow a different path. Um, there's actually the hydra has a lifespan they're thinking of uh, 1400 years oh my goodness that it probably only has a death because of pollutants in water or predators wow yeah so you know not every organism goes through the same life cycle that we that's do. true yeah so uh, and even different types of cells have different lifespans right. um, cancer cells can live forever Really? Yes. I did not know that. Henrietta Lacks, there's a book out about her. Um, they, I'm going to say this is, I don't know, 30s or 40s, took a biopsy, I think, of cervical cancer on her. Right, and they didn't ask, it did permission, not, that's right. uh, ask permission of her family. That, that is was true. a big deal. And so they're still using her cancer cells to this day. Right, without the family's permission. Right. And probably reimbursement. But right, that's exactly. A that's a different topic. That's a completely different topic. <laughs> and then not all organisms have the same rate of disease processes. Like right. chimps, as close as they are to us, mm -hmm. although they get cancer, they usually don't die of it. Really? Yeah. They just live with it, and they're fine. I guess so. Interesting. So, uh, so since we're going to be talking about longevity... From a biopsychosocial process, right. the interconnection. Mm -hmm. So, if we look at the biology and you know lifestyle and food choices impacts this heavily, we need to be able to breathe clean air, mm -hmm. and breathing um, has a couple of important components. We'll just <laughs> use a couple off that, the top yeah. of your head. We need clean air. Mm -hmm. When we breathe, anything that is breathed in even a medication through inhalation. Right. It is absorbed very quickly right. and thoroughly. It's the same rate of, of absorption as an IV. Really? Yes, ma'am. That it is interesting. It is that fast and that thorough. So when you look at air pollution, <gasps> the larger poly particles are bad, but the smaller ones are even worse because they right. get down lower. Right. Well, and secondhand smoke. Now I see why secondhand smoke is so bad. Right, right. And uh, it would be nice to be able to maybe four, six times a day, whatever you can slowly work into your routine, take five or six deep breaths. Mm -hmm. And the reason that you want to do this is that if you are breathing deeply, mm -hmm. You are triggering your vagus nerve yes. to tell your brain, I am safe. Therefore, let's take the cortisol, the stress down a little bit. Yeah. And this is what kills us so much in, in today's society is the high levels of stress. Yes. And that isn't just mental and emotional. That can be toxins. It can be lack of, it goes on and on, lack of purpose, right. on and on and on.
Uh, we need clean water. Of course. Yes, because we're about 60% water, and that changes with our age. We have more water when we're young, less uh, when we are older. Oh, that makes sense. Uh-huh. Um, and we, of course, need nutrients. Um, sugar is toxic. Right. Spikes in blood sugar are stressful uh, to the body. We mm-hmm. need good nutrients and macro and micronutrients to mm-hmm. give our cells uh, the building blocks for repair. And it's a good thing to eat only until you're about 80% full. You're the second person I've talked to today who really? told me that. Yeah. How yeah. interesting. Yeah, because intermittent fasting, uh, fewer calories, that helps our cells to be healthier. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, we, of course, need movement and flexibility. Um, movement uh, helps the lymph system to move. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have a pump like a heart. Right. That's part of your immune system. Um, and the healthiest populations in the world do not go to the gym. They just include movement in their day. Mm-hmm. So we could do it with maybe a standing desk, parking away from the front door, walking a little bit further, mm-hmm. um, not using so many time-saving devices, mm-hmm. knead the bread, um, you know, maybe shake the carpet. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it's thing. little things. It, it, all it all adds up. up. You don't need to go to the gym. I right. mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but to add all day long little movement helps yeah, tremendously. Absolutely. Um, just sitting mm-hmm. as we sit here. As we sit just, here. Yes. Just sitting for one hour shifts your metabolism into be more of a metabolic <clears throat> syndrome. So, oh, yeah, wow. just one hour. So that's pretty amazing. And um, so in comparison, in the 1900s, 10% of uh-huh. us had uh, sedentary jobs. Right. Now 90% of us do. And, you know, right. you cannot overcome that with eight hours of sitting at a desk or 10 or 12 mm-hmm. <laughs> with an hour's worth of exercise. Right. And then, of course, thoughts and beliefs huge are huge. Perceptions our reality. Yeah, absolutely. So let's then talk about the psychology, the body-brain connection. Yeah, that to me is one of the sweet spots. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is really important. Okay, so um, you've probably heard about people who walk on fire. Sure, yeah. Okay. Have you ever done that? No, but okay. it seems like it would be interesting. Yes. Okay, have you? But, no, I haven't. Really? Okay. And I'm not sure I would want to try it quite at this point in my life but there are people that do it right absolutely their belief Mm -hmm. allows them to walk on that fire and to not be hurt yeah now if they're going to do that they have to be very very positive and firm in that belief right if they're headed across that fire halfway through they can't go can i really do this (laughs) <laughs> no, no, you cannot do that. It's got to be all or nothing. Absolutely. Okay, so people do do it, and right. we have all seen the pictures, and they're able to do that because of their belief. Yeah. Okay. Now, we also know about placebo. Right. Absolutely. If, if you look at medication, they are going to be judged against placebo. And I will tell you that there are times the placebo outranks the medication. Mm-hmm. It's That's belief. a belief. Right. Conversely, there's no SIBO. Okay. Let's if I that. believe this is going to hurt me, mm-hmm. if I believe it will not help me, right, then it won't. Right. Your belief mm-hmm. gives you that reality. Mm-hmm. So, are you familiar with Bruce Lipton? Oh yes. Okay. So, in the 1960s, he was doing research on stem cells. Mm-hmm. He's a cellular biologist right. by training. Right, right. And so he had a stem cell, one stem cell. He put it in medium. After a week, he had, I think he said, 50,000. So he took those stem cells, which are all genetically identical. They all mm-hmm. came from one cell. Yeah. And put them in three different mediums. Mm-hmm. And then he would get three different types of cells. He would get... Bone, skin, Mm -hmm. nerve. Right. And so it is not the cell that determines. No, really. The outcome. It is not the genetics Mm -hmm. that determines the outcome. 
it is the environment that the cell is mm-hmm. grown in or subject to. Right. So what did you, do you know what type of uh, medium he put these things into? I, I don't know that for sure, but he was saying that because of that finding, 95% mm-hmm. of your health is because of the environment, the beliefs, that you oh, yeah. have, and only 5% of your health is because of genetics. Right, right. And that is epigenetics. Mm-hmm. Epigenetics, And those yeah. changes mm-hmm. in you mm-hmm. or your mother or your grandmother and probably further up the line, and you can be transferring that information on down mm-hmm. to your offspring, those are very real changes in how the genetics Absolutely. are read. And it can be passed on. Right. Well, we've heard studies of how twins may be separated at birth and raised in different environments will have different health outcomes. Right. Uh, Children who are adopted can take on the traits of the family that they're raised with. Right. Right? So if you're looking at the environment of our cells, it absolutely could be the external environment you know Mm -hmm. are we in loving relationships we're going to get to that are we in a polluted environment um toxins uh light emfs all of the all of the things that would impact us but on our internal environment that from our thoughts Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. that our perception and our thoughts give us our reality Mm -hmm. then we can influence our body to make various transmitters, hormones that is influencing our inner environment. Sure. Okay? So uh, stress, and again, it's not just mental or emotional. It is any stress. Um, It influences our body by raising cortisol. Sure. Sure. And so that not only is going to impact all your sex hormones, your growth hormones, your ability to sleep, even your thyroid. Right. Um, Bears, when they hibernate, Mm -hmm. they actually have an increase in reverse T3, which lets them go and decrease their respiration and hibernate. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you would like to probably have your thyroid in balance, mm-hmm. not high, not low, but in balance, yeah. so that you can maximize mm-hmm. your healthy weight, yeah. have energy, right, and that's all going to be impacted by stress. So right. to keep stress down, mm-hmm. um, it's really important to get this brain being able to reframe things in a positive way, yes. to be hopeful, not right. negative. Right. Gratitude. Gratitude is huge. Huge, huge uh, to be thankful, yes. And then we're going to come to the sociological part. Um, and we talked a little bit that we are human beings. We need a community for us to be taken Absolutely. care of. Mm-hmm. Um, human babies have a distress, a distress cry. That yeah. alerts their mother that they are in need of something. Well, if other animals had that same cry, they may not be able to survive in the wild because they're going to bring attention. Yeah, they okay? would. Right. right. So, you know, that is an interesting part for human babies. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. And loneliness, and it is our perception of loneliness here that is the important thing. That's right. Loneliness is very, very detrimental to our health. Mm -hmm. And it is your perception. Loneliness decreases immunity, decreases the ability of the body to uh, heal wounds, and increases inflammation. Wow. So you need to have a sense of belonging. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay? You can be alone in a crowd. You can't. Yes. Absolutely. Right. And to have a community is absolutely not an, a luxury. It is seen now as being absolutely vital to thrive. Mm-hmm. It is important as air, food, and sleep. Yeah. So to not have a community, a group of people to help support you, and yeah. for you to help support, is yeah. very detrimental. Uh, currently, there's 
many, many reports that say that a lot of people in our society or worldwide do not have one person that they can confide in. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. That is shocking to me. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of new... um, disciplines uh, to look at this. There's human sociological uh, genomics and social cognitive neuroscience. Those are a couple of new um, branches of science just addressing this kind of issue. Well, isn't it interesting that we have to have these new branches of science to tell us something that we've lost along the way that we used to know? Yeah. Right? Yes. This is this ancient knowledge. People used to... (laughs) Yes. Live in communities and extended families. Right. I, I It's right? just, yeah. To explain, you know, these branches of science to explain to us why the lifestyle we've grown away from is really best. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when we talk about communication, we're not talking really on the phone or via Facebook. Well, really, it's just the... We are talking face-to-face. Yeah. So that we... It's very different. Right. This is connection. Yeah. The others, we think are connection, but they're not connection. Yeah. I agree. So, um, and social rejection or isolation is the same and is perceived by the body the same as a broken arm. Interesting. The pain is the same. It is read in the same areas of the brain, the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex and the anterior insula. So when those two areas of the brain are triggered by either pain or rejection, social rejection, it sends out signals to the sympathetic nervous system. And so it increases norepinephrine and epinephrine, which Mm -hmm. is going to then kick your um, HPA, the hypothalamus, um, ad- a pituitary and uh, adrenal Adrenals. cortex mm-hmm. to increase cortisol, which you don't want, to increase right. vagal st- stimulation, which is going to increase heart rate, constrict blood vessels, make your blood stickier so it can clot, and on it, not digest, not rest. You are under threat. It's going to increase cytokines mm-hmm. and then increase inflammation. Oh, my goodness. Right. So I can see how loneliness leads to inflammation. Right. Or if you've been, if you perceive a rejection. Yeah. Yeah. And who of us have not? Right. Oh, that's why we feel so awful after a breakup. Right. Or a break in the family. Right. Uh, Yes. A disruption in the family or being, you know, a loss of job even. Right. Or, if you know, if it's, if it is, if it's, you know, something that's, you can't, you know, the job moved, Mm -hmm. That's going to impact you, but to have it willful is going to be a different level. Absolutely. And so a lot of holistic pr- practitioners will ask uh, people questions uh, about uh, their relationship with family, friends, uh, co-workers, home life. Mm-hmm. They're trying to tease out this type of information. How connected are you? What kind of community support do you have? Yeah. So we've all heard about the six degrees of separation. Oh, yeah. Okay, and the world, the entire world is connected by six degrees. Let's talk about three degrees of separation. (laughs) So you. Right. Your friend. Yeah. And your friend's friend. Yeah. Okay. So three degrees of separation. So your friend's friend, Mm -hmm. their lifestyle has a ripple effect on you. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. How so? So if your friend's friend is happy, then you have a 6% increase of more happiness. Wow. Now, if you get a raise, yeah, you have a 2% increase in happiness. So your friend's friend is going to impact you more than that. Right. Also, conversely, it's, it's positive or negative. So your friend's friend, their um, lifestyle, considering obesity or smoking, mm-hmm. happiness, drug abuse, alcohol abuse... Positive things like happiness, yes, um, movement, mm-hmm. positive lifestyles, that's all going to affect you also because of the ripple effect. Right. So your choice of friends count. Mm-hmm. And how do we choose friends or do we even choose friends? Right. Or do I, I don't know. Collect them along the way. 
I don't know, is it like bumper cars and you just kind of, <laughs> you know, where, wherever I happen to be and I bump into somebody and am I going to stick there? Am I going to go someplace else? Uh, what is the criteria we use to make friends? Uh, to value friends, do we value new connections? Do we try to maintain friendships? And nothing stays the same. If you don't nurture it and let it grow and thrive, then it is going to wilt. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there is a book, a new book out called Belong. Oh, nice. I wish you guys could see the video. <laughs> it's a lovely yellow bright book by uh, Radha Agrawal. Uh-huh. And I think she was 30-ish when she decided to go down this path. She was living in New York, and she was getting ready to go out and I think celebrate her 30th birthday. And she was going to go to a bar... And she thought, this is crazy. I don't even like going to a bar. I don't like getting drunk. None of the people there do I really resonate with. So she has actually written a book on step-by-step -step ways of finding people that can be your authentic community and how to show oh, up with, for them. Oh, I love them. that. Yeah, it, it's really an interesting book. It, it's, that is very interesting. Uh, yeah, it's well thought out and mm -hmm. uh, gives you step by step ways of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, can we put that in the show notes? Well, you, yes, you, yeah, absolutely. Send me the uh, information on this book, and I'll put it in the show notes. Okay. Um, so, connection is the important verb here. Mm -hmm. The connecting and communicating. Right. And so, how many times do we are we with people and we're not? communicating, we're not connecting, we're just kind of being there, or we're being there and on our phone. Yeah. Currently, 5% of divorces are because of the iPhone. Uh, that's an interesting t statistic. Well, it is very uh, addictive. Sure. And addictive behaviors are not good for connection. Right. And so, yes, currently they're saying 5% of divorces is because of the iPhone. So, you know, if you're not communicating um, at home, are you communicating with your spouse or significant other, your loved ones? Or are you just sharing a space to live? Right. Um, and community has been found to help people make better decisions and to get unstuck from their story. Yeah. So I'm going to ask this to you. Sure. They say that increases your ability to use your intuition. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I would have to say that is true. You have to be in a good place for that. And okay. You're right. Um, you can't be all things to all people. Uh, to ask for help also helps to build community. Mm -hmm. um, some people, females, are good at this. They feel guilty if they don't feel they can accomplish everything themselves. Absolutely. They're afraid to ask for help. So we need to understand we, need, we are beings, we're not doings. <laughs> we need to allow ourselves to be able to rest and take care of ourselves when needed yeah. at the level that we need. Right. Right, right. Um, we need to build a community of like-minded people. How would you find it? How would you find them? You could take classes of something that interests you, because mm -hmm. those would have a higher incidence of people. Right. At least you're interested in the same thing. That's right. You, you can, know, that's what I like about Meetup. Right. Meetup.com is great. Uh -huh. And you're interested, and you get a group of people to go do things with. Right. So show up and... And right. be there and, and right. connect. You can also volunteer to help with causes that are important to you. Um, you can just let other people that you know, let them know you're thinking of them once in a while. That's really That's nice. That's a very simple yeah. thing to do. Yeah. So uh, social media, media helps to find people, but it's the face-to-face -face communication that you really want. It's the thoughtfulness, too. Yeah. Right. 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 So all of this... The take home here is that 95% of our health can be impacted positively or negatively by our, by our, own, uh, our own, own actions. actions. So right. um, I will read if we have time. Yeah, let's okay. go for it. There's 16 different parameters. Oh, yes. This is so yes. good. And this is, is really 
it's not things that we don't know, but this is what has been found um, that if people will, well, I'm going to give you the 16 and then I will tell you how many of these you need to put in place to increase your life. So uh, you need to have a low blood sugar. Okay. Uh, fasting should be uh, below 100 milligrams per mil for the U.S. Mm -hmm. Uh, low blood pressure, optimum would be about 115 uh, over 75 at midlife. Uh, you would like a low total blood cholesterol of less than 200 and a low LDL cholesterol of less than 100. Okay. You would like to have a normal weight with a BMI of uh, less than 18.5 to 25. Mm -hmm. Probably more important, you would like a female to have a waist size of less than 35 and a male less than 40 because that tells you you don't have fat around your abdomen, which right. is your liver. Oh. You would like to eat fewer calories mm -hmm. and to eat mostly a plant-based Mediterranean diet Ooh, yeah. with coffee or tea. Uh, avoid nutritional deficiencies. Exercise regularly, move, just be active, um, don't smoke, and if you mm -hmm. did smoke, stop. Drink less alcohol. They're now saying even the red wine is probably not the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. um, get regular, restful sleep of Good. the correct quality and quantity. Have healthy gums. Mm -hmm. Challenge your mind. A positive attitude and avoid anxiety and depression. Right. Shed stressors. Mm -hmm. uh, have a daily structure and be resilient. Oh, that's good, yeah. And stay socially connected. Yeah, those so, are great. So, you've got 16 items there. Mm -hmm. Four. Put four of them in place, and you will add 14 additional Healthy years to your life. Healthy years. That's the key. Oh, that those are good guidelines because I mean, they're, they're measurable. Right. We can check them. And you can make small changes. Absolutely. It's the small changes that are easiest to build on. Absolutely. It's kind of like compound interest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And if you can increase um, your practice to include five of the above, your likelihood of living to 90 with lower disease and lower dementia risk uh, is in place, and it's never too late to pick up a healthy habit. So uh, I also will give you a um, link to a cardiovascular risk calculator that oh, you can that's very go good. online. Uh, and Oh, that'll be great. And see where you are cardiovascularly. So uh, a yeah. lot of hope here. There is a lot of hope here. A lot of hope. And thank goodness we had you do the, all the research, <laughs> put it all together for us. Well, this you is know. my love. I, I this this is my love. It, I and have to I say, am so happy there. to have somebody who will be interested enough to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> that is my my quest. I want people to know um, that they have a lot of power. Right. Yeah. We do. We do, and the, we don't have to live in disease. We don't have to have a low quality of life as we age. It doesn't no. matter what our parents did. It didn't. It doesn't matter what our grandparents did. Right. And how they passed, or what they, you know, what they passed right. up. Right. So, uh, we are unique individuals, and we can take that power back. Mm -hmm. And I love that message because. We find that we are, you know, it, our destiny is in our own hands. It truly is. It truly yeah, is. to a very large extent. And it's one thing to live a long life, but it's another thing to have a long, healthy life. Yeah, it's the healthy life you'd like. That's what you want. Yeah, you don't want to not it. You don't want to be here and not be able to enjoy things. Right. And you probably don't want to be a burden on your family. No, you don't want to be a burden on your family because it's expensive. It's time consuming. It takes, uh, you know, it takes a toll on everyone that, um, you know, it, it's just, yeah, it's not what we want no. in, in life. No. And truly, it, you know, if, if you do these things, you can impact them. Uh, and the holistic way to health, uh, even with dementia, Parkinson's, yeah. uh, people Absolutely. don't believe this. But people can reverse those diseases if they haven't gone on too long mm -hmm. and fairly quickly. I believe that. And fairly quickly. Right. 
we, we, Books were, are out there. They are out there, and there are, are health coaches. Mm -hmm. Now, you've recently just passed a written test. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. In fact, you're kind of celebrating that today. I am celebrating today. I got word that I uh, passed my written final for functional diagnostic nutrition, which is a mouthful, but it um, is a way uh, of giving people the ability to get functional labs to actually see what their cortisol level is right. if their body is in balance. It's yeah. the balance, uh, how maybe leaky your gut is. If you're absorbing your food, if, if your right. gut is not healthy enough to absorb your food, you can be eating the best food ever. But if you don't absorb it, then that's a problem. Conversely, I will tell you that, you know, I my share of broccoli and mushrooms, and I did a food sensitivity test, not an mm -hmm. allergy test, right? but sensitivity, which is much, much lower. It, you would probably never even be able to feel that you were sensitive to it. It takes a blood test. And I'm actually sensitive to eggs, mm -hmm. mushrooms, and broccoli. <laughs> So oh, who would know? Heck. Who would know? Those are the staples of your diet. But but now you know. I know. Knowledge now know. is power. Right. Right? And um, so now you're able to actually bring those tools into what you do with people. That's right. If, right. if they care to, uh, if, if they're doing everything right, mm -hmm. I mean, truthfully, if they're really trying sure. and they're not getting any results, there's got to be a reason why. Your body is not in balance somewhere. Right. And so all of these functional tests will point them in a direction that may allow them to see where they have a, a toxin or a toxicity or an imbalance. A sensitivity. Right. 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 So that they Something can... Something is off. Right. So that you can address it. Right. Because we want to know about that so we can address it. Right. right. You know, and I've known people who, um, you know, they're... Diet is impeccable. They do yoga all the time, and they still get cancer. And so there's that tells you something is off in their right. balance. There's That's right. something that needs to be addressed. Of course, mm -hmm. the work that I do, um, it's energy and emotion and beliefs. And so we just look at, well, what, where do we need to tweak what our thoughts are? Where mm -hmm. do we need to tweak our beliefs? What do we need to examine as, as, far, as, as far as what beliefs we've taken on from our parents, from our and I'm learning teachers. more about that myself, and I'm really thrilled with that information. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And because it, it just feeds all together. After a while, once you get doing this, it's such a circle. It is a rabbit <laughs> there's, hole. Yeah, yeah, there's hardly a way of saying this is, di is different from the other part. It's all connected. It's all connected. It is all connected. Mm -hmm. We all hold a piece to that puzzle. Right. right? And that is true. We all do. All of all of these practitioners from all of these different disciplines. Absolutely. Yeah, they all uh, bring a different uh, aspect of healing. They do. Mm -hmm. Good. And we all may have a different um, level of that healing that we need to do. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We yeah. do. And there's so many areas that we can pursue. Um, you know, it's just it's just vast. You, it's like you start to scratch the surface and you see this whole big universe below right. it. But but we all do hold a piece of that puzzle and to create that picture mm -hmm. on the front of the box. Right. <laughs> That's right. Right. But, you know, and we all just do the best we can with what the information we have and the resources available. We're all doing the best we can and what we think is right at any given time anyway. It's just that And special. as you change one aspect, mm -hmm. it's not like the rest of this isn't going to be influenced, too. Yeah, it's, that's true. It, everything is continuously moving. Absolutely. It's all yeah. connected. So it's you start all to connected. pull one string and it pulls the rest of right. the sweater. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Donna, thank you. It has been so informative. Well, I, I appreciate being asked back. This is really quite an oh. honor. <laughs> <laughs> Very you. much an honor. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. You're certainly welcome. <laughs> Happy to have you and talk about these things. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, we've, we've been here with Donna Kelly, integrative nutritional health coach, and now functional... Diagnostic. Diagnostic. Practitioner. Practitioner. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Uh, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being.
to learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.